Welcome back, everyone, to Sandy Lost, uh, episode four of chapter one, and uh, I'm D Payne, and I have a whole bunch of players here that will will introduce ourselves as we go through. Um, but first off, well, you know what? I'll save this because uh, when we ended our last recording, I don't know if you guys remember, we were wondering what a certain word meant. And then my, my friend, she let us know right at the end of the recording. And so to make sure that we're good, I, I will let everyone know at the beginning of this session what that word means, just as a quick reminder. But when this episode comes out, it will be Cyber Monday. Oh. And so I, I just figured it would be a fun, a fun question to ask as we start and we introduce ourselves uh what is uh do you guys have any fun memories of black friday or cyber monday cyber monday i don't think would have or what would you you know if you have a story but what would you prefer i feel like this is a very like heavy-weighted question now because not a lot of people want to go out and <laughs> with covid but uh or if they watch the news reports <laughs> but anyway um yeah, well, uh, I'll, whoever wants to, how about you, Knight? You seem like a person that loves to wake <laughs> up at the crack of uh, never and go shopping. Uh, hi, I'm Knight. I do things on the internet, play games. I play Caleb Winters. And, um, yeah, Cyber Monday is, I mean, it, it, you. It, I feel like it's also kind of a stacked question with a group that does things online anyway. That <laughs> you're going to go for the online shopping I did, I did the whole uh, Black Friday thing once, and that was more than enough. And then accidentally, <laughs> and then accidentally stumbled into a Black Friday thing at one point, not really thinking about it. At uh, <laughs> one of the electronic stores, like I need to go get a couple of things, and yeah, when the lines were wrapping around the store, it's like no, I don't need what I was going to get after all. Did you just forget <laughs> that it was Black Friday. Yep, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't thinking That's about it at all. <laughs> well, I'll go to the complete other side, at least on my screen, of how everyone's facing. How about you, Elizabeth? You uh, you a big, big deal, one-day chaos person? Nope. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth. I play Core Richmond. And no, I am not a big go out and go shopping on Black Friday. That actually was never part of my life. My family was not into it. Black Friday actually stresses me out a lot because um, both Black Friday and Cyber Monday because there's so many things to buy and never enough money to buy them in and or with and the amount of negotiating that has to happen in my life in terms of what is being bought and what is not being bought stresses me out uh, that I just wish sometimes it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, well, Elizabeth wants all retails to lose their job. Okay, I see how <laughs> it wow. is. Wow. All right. <laughs> that, is, that is a leap. That is a leap that we just took. Welcome That's what I heard. Uh, Welcome to <laughs> Fill in the Blank News Corporation, where we'll make the biggest leaps to make me look better. <laughs> right, Who are guys. you voting? Well, guess what? They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I just hate capitalism. Nah, I'm all right with that. Well, so does the whole internet. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here Old first. statement nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about you, John? Do you... Uh... If I remember, I can't remember. Do we ever go out on Black Friday <laughs> together? I don't know if we ever did together. Um, so first off, my name's John. I play Percy Flanagan in the in the story. Um, I Black Friday was never a thing when I was younger. You know, in my family, like we also weren't like a Black Friday you know family at all. Um, it started more when I was in college, and so. I remember after one Thanksgiving being back at, or maybe it was, I forget why, but I was still, like, in college. Um, 
Well, just couldn't give it up. I know. Well, I'm trying to remember the timeline. <laughs> My family had moved down to where I was going mm-hmm. to college fairly early on, so I may have been. I was probably in this region, but at my family's house for Thanksgiving. But um, beforehand, we were just kind of hanging out with some college friends and like made the split decision at 12 o'clock at night that we were going to go and get in line for Black Friday. So we just went out to Best Buy, stood in line from like 12 to 6 in the morning. Uh, I didn't even really have anything that I was interested in buying. I think I bought a couple of cheap like DVD spindles, like read-write DVD spindles back when that was a cool thing to have. Oh, we still have those. We do for all so. your pirated animes. Those were the ones I bought those. on the first Black Friday I went to. I move them around and yeah. dust around them because they who are, uses them anymore? I have like right? 300 of them that I will never oh. use for anything. Hey, it's a good, like, you just put a candle in the middle. Here you go. <laughs> exactly. Frisbees. So. They're frisbees. <laughs> I did that for a few years, and it was it was kind of fun for like the social aspect of like hanging out with friends. But I never really went for anything that I was looking for. Nowadays, I'm much more into Cyber Monday because I can just stay at home, and I am the one that causes Elizabeth the anxiety because it's usually something that I would like to buy, and so <laughs> I have to enter into negotiations with her about what we're going to spend. Um, oh look, I have this shopping cart with five hundred dollars worth of stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. And it would Start be like two thousand if I didn't buy it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's exactly how those conversations go. <laughs> right before Christmas. Yeah. But do you need it? Well, it's on sale. Obviously I need it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, nowadays it's usually like Black Friday deals on like protein powder of some sort or like some sort of like it's health true. fitness food that costs a lot that we can like buy in bulk for cheap yeah that's about that's about all we spend now we're really boring we got <laughs> See, a tv we, we did get a TV, tv a couple of years ago that's a win we did. yeah, yeah. I, I tend to be the type phones. i tend to be the type that just we'll, yeah, if i need something i just well. buy it <laughs> i know i know I d- right like i don't wait for yeah. sales no. yeah that's usually oh. it's oh it's, cyber it's monday point yeah, it's to the point anymore anyway where Black Friday deals aren't that significant anyway, so it's like you might spend, you know, save 10, 20 bucks, and it's like, well, I'll just buy it now. I don't need to wait. Oh, it's Cyber Monday in two weeks? Well, oh well, I'll just buy it now. Yeah. Right. I need, I need it this week, not two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't really think I'm like, you know what? I There's a few items. Like, I'll keep an eye out. Like, for example... I think if well, if I recover the money, uh, and and good, if they have a deal on a VR set, I think mm. that's something. Like I look at big big items, like that. I'm like, I don't want to pay full price, but if I can get a little bit knocked off of it, sure. Right. I'm game with that. Yeah. Um. But to answer my own question, uh, I do like the Cyber Mondays, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> like, because I'm just like, I don't know. When I'm online, it's like I don't. I have a a big mistrust of the internet. I don't understand <laughs> anyone who would do anything on it. But it's like, I I'm like, well, I'll go onto the Amazon or the Best Buys or anything, and I'm just like, how do I know this cheap thing is actually worth the cheapness that I'm about to give the money for? Mm-hmm. When I'm in the store. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, I got five options. And this one, this is actually two years ago when my headphones broke and I had to buy these. I'm like, this one said it was the best light of this year. Okay, I'll get these. <laughs> um, so, or, you trust, so you trust the printing on the boxes say, <laughs> more than the sucker, reviews on the I'm internet. Sucker for got it. I, I, also asked my, I also asked my brother. Like, he has the same headphones. I was like, yeah, have you heard of these headphones? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, are they good? And he's like, yeah, I like them. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so... Best headphones, 2021. Some guy. and approved by my brother. Oh, that I saw. <laughs> my brother also approved him. And for any context, yes, he was the one that died with cancer in my dream. So, <laughs> so how can they, you not trust a person like that? They don't know anything about that. That was they don't need to. <laughs> 
and Don't out worry, of context these shows what I want. Jokes really <laughs> if they show podcast popularity. Let's be real. If they show up to the stream, nine times out of ten, I would probably already have told this story. So, um, but yeah. So, but the thing, is, like, I don't know. I think I just like the chaos of it all. I like going out and seeing angry people trying oh, to buy stuff. It stresses me out so much. So I, I, anxiety producing. I didn't like standing in line. I heard stories of people that would stand in line. And uh, that seemed like, I don't know, the way they told it, it sounded really neat. Because it was just like, they would set up a tent. Like, I know a few people. There's actually a pe- person that I know John and I both know. Um, I'm not going to... <laughs> So, I'm not going to dox him on here, but uh, <laughs> he is a good friend of a, a friend of ours, Fetters. Mm, that's what. That's what. <laughs> uh, not Fetters, but a good friend of yes. the one that, yeah. yeah. His whole family would pretty much eat turkey and then set up a tent and then go out <laughs> and like the Bozkovs and like play wow. ultimate frisbee with everybody else. Cause it was like, we just put wow. our stuff in line, we claim it. And then like, it's like it's tailgating for rich people. <laughs> like I don't know from what I hear. Actually, I assume people who tailgate also are rich. Because I was gonna say, don't you have to be rich to tailgate? Because you have to buy the tickets. Yeah. Yeah. It's tailgating for sophisticated it's, people. It's <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch sports. <laughs> sophisticated people that. That feels like a little bit of a stretch. How about this? It's tailgating for non-nerds. Just like non-nerds. how sitting around a D&D table is tailgating for nerds. <laughs> you just sit there, you throw some some plastic. Our, hey, they, uh, our metaphors suck. are getting real stretched here. <laughs> so we're tailgating now. Got it. <laughs> exactly. I do not have enough good food for tailgating. I'm sorry. Well, that's on you. Mm. <laughs> Any, anyway, let's. Uh, we we waited a whole month for our time for them. It was a week, but uh, last episode we were one. Well, the word, the term, busing came up, and oh, right. uh, that's where we started. I uh, I asked my friend. Um, I I told her it was going to be in the podcast, um, and that I would share it with her. I don't know if she would actually listen to the whole episode, um, but Kathy, thank you. Uh, good friend of mine, and also her Instagram posts make me very hungry because she's a food <laughs> food person, Instagrammer person. Any poop. Um, she was like busing. Well, first she laughed at me in all caps, and then she <laughs> responded with busing means spectacularly spectacularly delicious, but technically it means ejaculating. <laughs> and the example she gave is it basically means this tastes so good I'm gonna bust. So, there you go. Everyone has um, a new word now. Yep. To where I responded, well then, I don't think I like this new form of English. And then she <laughs> laughed at me again. <laughs> and then we were talking about something else. Um, what was it? Uh, and then she was like, she was like, wait, that's so sick. And then she's like, sick is good, by the way. And I'm like, I I know that one. <laughs> 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 it's like <laughs> that one was when I was in middle school, <laughs> if not elementary school. The, the, uh, it's <laughs> most of those. They seem to like come in cycles and go back and forth mm-hmm. in what they mean anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll just go back so, to groovy. So, Kathy, Ooh. if you uh, actually listen to this, thank you. And yeah. judging how times will go, I will ask again in about two months of what a word means. Uh, it goes in cycles. <laughs> I could look it up myself, but I like starting conversations. Any on in, online, I don't like starting conversations in real anyway. life with people I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's one other thing that we got to do, and we're going real uh, long. Yes, but no, this is actually part. You guys get to roll dice. All oh, right. So we are doing the alternative rule of luck, and so for every we for if you guys haven't caught on yet, we record these in bulk. And so what we're going to do is at the beginning of our bulk recordings, we're going to roll luck. And pretty much, it's very much like leveling up. You guys are going to roll uh, 2d10s, like the normal roll. And if you fail your luck roll, 
you get to roll a 1d10 and you get to add that amount of points to your luck. If you pass your luck roll, you don't get anything. So this way, hopefully with this rule, we'll be able to spend a little bit more luck and, and everything. Um, I can't remember if you can spend luck on on uh, other stuff as well. Like I know you can spend luck pretty much on everything, but sanity, I think. Well, luck rolls and I think sanity rolls. I think those are the only two things you can't use them on. Um, so I can't use my luck to make my luck roll fail to get more luck? Exactly. <laughs> um, and does fail means we roll over, right? Yes, yes, if you roll over your luck. This is the one and only time. We're going to use little baby dice. Do you guys see these little baby dice? No, I'm old. Little baby <laughs> dice. <laughs> And um, so, like, I had spent luck last session, so that still remains, right? So I have to yes, under yeah. That so, mm -hmm. yep. spending luck is like that is a spendable uh, thingy. So, like, that's a spendable number. But like, normally, like, this is the way we're doing it is normally you don't get luck back. But the way it's an alternative rule in the book, and uh, you guys is a way to get it back. All right, so we're rolling a D one hundred. Yeah. On the yeah, the normal stat. normal yeah. roll. Yeah. All right, I got eighty five over my current luck of forty nine, and I get a whopping right. three Ooh. luck back. Hey, it's better than what you had. All right, I got a sixty two over forty five, with mm, mm, six six luck. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got a ninety over forty seven. And then we're rolling 1d10 on that? Yep. Yep. All right, get Isn't all these the... bad rolls. Yeah, it's going to be John's <laughs> highest roll of the night. I rolled the or 10. day. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And so... Hopefully this isn't indicative of what is <laughs> Right. We might be uh, in trouble. Let's play some fine. music. Oh, it's happy music. Yeah, because it's a brand new day. Um, so for quick recap, um, pretty much we start off with everyone doing different things. We saw Caleb at his workshop, uh, and then his whole day was pretty much went to the workshop, showed up at the general store to say hi, to pick up some groceries and meeting some other people that we'll meet when I recap another character, went home, talked to his parents, uh, heard a little bit of, uh, strangeness, uh, and then was like, hey, help fix house on weekend? He like, okay, but I go talk to cop lady, uh, which is uh, Sheriff Hudson. Goes and talks with her for a bit, and uh, pretty much, uh, I forget the specifics, but in the end of that, um, said, hey, go talk to father. Uh, of course, it's the one person that's not on here. <laughs> <laughs> father uh, um, Bailey, go talk to with Father Bailey, and uh, and uh, he was like, okay, I'll do that tomorrow, and uh, he went home. Uh, then we have Cora. Cora, uh, we found out, is now working at a general store. Uh, she's got a kid named Timmy, and uh, Sheriff Hudson kind of puts shows up there, puts up a poster of missing people to where they both meet. Um, the Uncle Buster. Hello there. And uh, I think they had a great old time with him. And uh, <laughs> after a little bit of talking and finding out that there's a circus happening later, uh, they go and uh, go forward with their day. Um, Cora, if I also remember, she's going to leave... Um, pretty much is wondering about Percy because uh, it's kind of getting around that time where she's going to leave him out some food and stuff so she goes to meet him in the, the woods uh, the normal meeting spot meanwhile Percy he shows up uh, coming over the side of a hill to see a circus being set up and by totally break game breaking rolls he goes and gets uh, a crate and uh, finds a a parcel wrapped in unprinted newspaper paper I don't know what that's called maybe newsprint paper that sounds cool uh, and uh, wrapped with twine which was the whole weight of the box um, 
finding out that this thing seems to be uh, very weirdly and supernaturally tied together and he can't open it up he's like well gonna go bring this to Korra because she's weird and uh, <laughs> and runs well slowly drags this thing uh, all the way over to the meeting place but on the way um, this box becomes even more unique as it begins talking to him and calls him his favorite name of Percival uh, they bring it a little bit farther uh, to when he meets uh, and they uh, both Cora and Percy they kind of have a little bit of talking and uh, pretty much the box looks at them well it doesn't look at them uh, <laughs> the box speaks to both of them before kind of this weird presence leaving sent did I write this down now I totally blanked on what the box just said. Um, I believe the box. Did you guys write down what the box says? Otherwise, I'm going to have to look it up. Because it was kind of important and I forgot to write it down. Um, it's pretty much something. I don't know. The box did something very disturbing. And then uh, Cora was able to pick up the box. And uh, with that, uh, we go into the next day. So, Caleb, you now are walking down to the south section of town, um, and it's, uh, this music is a little bit too happy for what I was going for. <laughs> um, so, we'll switch to this. Um... Wish there was a way to make the VLC player do a more faded switch. But anyway, that's something for offline pain to figure out. <laughs> so you walk into this place. Um, would you say that you went to ever been back to seeing uh, uh, Ignis? Ignis? Uh, Ignatus? There we right. go. Um, before? Or. Uh, uh, this is where the school would be. So we'll say like after you graduated school, which I guess it would kind of be close. This is the problem with timeline stuff. I don't know. We wouldn't have when, been out of school too long, probably. By normal years, standards, maybe. but I don't know. I don't know if in this time, if like people would have stopped going to school like around sixteen or, or something to that. But yeah, anyway, yeah, we'll just say a couple of years. We'll keep it bland. But um, is is Caleb a, a churchgoer? No, I don't think Caleb would be regular for the church. And that, that, that's kind of why you know, the when the sheriff suggested it, it's like, yeah, maybe. And, yeah, at least it's somebody to, that might have some ideas. Um, but yeah, he's he's not really a, normally a churchgoer. Mm -hmm. Hey. Well... You walk in and I don't know. Maybe feel free to direct, like, change this. Uh, but like, maybe when you walk in, like, maybe you've been in like the, some of the classroom buildings on the side, but like, you haven't been in like the main building in in years. Possibly not since um, the most substantial thing of when Sally's funeral. Um, like, there's been funerals and everything, but it's just, like, someone so close to you dying will always stick in your, in your mind. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe you have some, like, small flashbacks of some of the, like, the service in there. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of is a, a big, like, kind of open building, a tall ceiling. Um, you can kind of see like kind of a table up near the front with a few like a statue um and like a kind of a, a stained glass window of um i'm going off the top of my head and now i'm like this is a real <laughs> building and i can't remember if saint ignis has a stained glass window so probably yeah we'll say a stained glass window as i do a quick uh <laughs> And regardless, in our case, it does. Yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you see that, and... Uh, yeah, you see... Um, you pretty much see... Uh, 
an older, not an, a super old man, but a man um, kind of in his, uh, to you being, uh, I think, well, you're like 1920? Yeah, nine, nine, yeah, 19 years old. Um, and uh, pretty much you see, there's not a stained glass. I'm looking at the church right now. <laughs> but it is tall. It is a tall building. It's got a big old steeple out front. Um, like, it's a white church with a like black roof. And, um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, pretty much it's just, it's very kind of regal looking, uh, if that's the right word. And it's got, like, buildings around the side that you know. Oh, hey. There, I found a picture. Yeah, so like you walk up this like tiled center uh, aisle with wooden pews on each side, and like you can kind of see like it's got like pillars going down. Um, it's got like the altar with the cross and like the table and, and like other vestments up there, um, with a few tapestries up there, and like you you hear kind of like off into uh, on one of the sides like a little bit of um, movement and walking a little bit farther in. As we said, you see. Kind of a man in his mid-ish thirties, um, with a kind of gray, not gray. Sorry, he has red hair. Um, that that is kind of fading its color a little bit. Um, but yeah, he uh, this man though he kind of looks at you and you can he just looks very tired, um, like that. Pretty much the years. Uh, the past 10 years really have weighed heavily on him and he's like he sees you and you recognize this right away as Father Bailey and he's just like oh um <clears throat> hey hello there um Caleb Caleb right um yeah I I don't know for really why I'm here but uh, I don't know there doesn't there doesn't seem to be anybody else that might have any ideas so I don't know. Can we talk, can okay. we talk for a few minutes? Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, y your mother, she, she's told me. Well, I should ask you. Do you think your parents would go to to church? Um, yeah. I mean, they seem like they, they're the uh, religious type, and that may be part of where the uh, trying to set me up with somebody is also part of coming from that too. <laughs> I forgot that was <laughs> that was something. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like, oh yes, um, your mother is. Uh, yeah, she's told me a lot, and um, she's also told me to keep an eye out for potential spouse. That you, that doesn't look quite your hair. Um, here, let's sit really, down here. Really, really, mom. <laughs> just kind of like under his breath, <laughs> and like you kind of see like just a a smile, kind of like kind of a, a smirk and he's just like oh, I'm just joking it's, your mother does pray for you but um but how can I help you so I don't I don't know if you're I don't know if you this is the right place or not but I know you the whole thing 10 years ago kind of started sort of close to here and I don't know weird stuff has started showing up again and it's almost that time again and uh, it's just really weird stuff so well okay so yesterday I went to the general store to get some stuff for for dinner with the parents and there's this really weird uh, really weird guy from I guess there's a circus in in town I don't know if you heard about that yet or not but well uh, he yeah, somehow I haven't. well so yeah well yeah, that's happening but he somehow slipped this piece of paper from promoting his show into my pocket. I don't know how he pulled that off, but that that's not really the kind of the important part of this, I guess. But so I get home and well, after dinner or just before dinner, this piece of paper seemed to start talking to me. And talking. it seemed like it was talking anyway. I, I, I don't understand it. And I don't know. This this whole thing just it's just weird and everything's just feeling wrong again. Hmm. Yeah, it's um 
I don't know. I, 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 I talked to the sheriff last night. I talked to the sheriff last night, and well, I mean, it's her suggestion that I come in and talk to you, maybe, and see if you had any ideas. Um, I don't know what to do. Uh, Alex told you. I'm sorry. Sheriff Hudson told you to come here. Um, yeah, the the events of ten years ago. Yeah, that. It weighs heavily on all of us. Um, it, uh, and especially around this season, and I'm surprised that, in one sense, like, it might be a good thing to have a little bit of levity come in here, but this, um, this seems a little strange. Uh, you said that the paper. Can I. Do you have the paper? Well, so I showed it to Sheriff Hudson last night, and. She was going to take it and show to some of it, uh, asked to take it and show it to people, but then she just burned it, so, I mean, it's gone now, but, I mean, the, mm. the, the guy that managed to get it in my pocket, he weirded me out the whole time, too. It's like, I know, we're, I don't like to judge people that way, but, like, he just really got under my skin. Hmm. Uh... I have some free time, uh, today. Um, what is today? Let me see. Uh, and, like, he's, like, kind of looking up in the air, and he's like, that, that's right, Thursday, Thursday. Sorry, it's, uh, at a little bit of a late start, you know? Wednesday prior meetings. Anyway, um, let's see, we, uh, I can go, uh, you said there, do you know where they're going to be, or do you remember where the, uh, they said the circus was going to take place? Uh, it's on the piece of paper, I, um, I'm assuming Caleb would remember this and be able to pass it out, I don't remember off the top of my yeah. head. Yeah, they, it's pretty much they're setting up in the north side of town, and, um, and since it's been a little while, Caleb would also remember that, um, there's a flyer posted in the general store as well. Oh yeah, the, whether it's still that. there is uh, is a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I think the, the guy also put a flyer in the general store too. So I don't okay. know. I don't know if all of them talk or just the one that they gave me. All right. Well, I have to go down there and, and get some groceries anyway. So uh, yeah. Um, well, let's, I don't want to seem too forward, so if, uh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you now if you want me to. If, if not, then, uh, I'll, I'll stop by, I'll stop by your place and, and, uh, you know, let you know if, uh, if I hear or find anything out, okay? All right, sounds good. Hey, right. well, God bless you, my child. And... Yeah, hope to, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to see you again in, in the service. So. Uh, I'll think. I'll think about it. Yeah, that's what they all say. Well, I don't want to hold you up. You got work to get to, don't you? Yeah, my dad's given me a little bit of cover this morning, so I can try to figure out what's going on with the, this thing a little bit and get my head straight a little bit. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'll I'll talk to you and when I if I find anything out. Yeah, maybe just uh, let me know if you even if you don't find anything, just mm -hmm. I don't know if it, whatever it feels like to you, and know, uh, maybe it'll help. And I I just don't want the my friends to end up thinking we need to go and do something rash or something. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely let you guys know. I know how you and your friends get when uh, when given options. Well, I mean, I tried to stop them last time. It's all good. No one blames you. Wow. All right. Well, I, I guess I'll talk to you yourself. later. Okay. That's easier said than done. I know. And uh, he he kind of walks with you towards the door, and he's like, I'll, I'll let you know if I hear anything. 
All right. Uh, thanks, Father. And kind of slowly walks mm -hmm. out of the out of the building and turns back up towards town. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll we'll move over to um. Well, Percy, what are you doing now? Last uh, we saw. You know, here's something I don't think we figured out last time. I know Cora picked up the patch, the the partial, um, because it was super super light. But uh, did you, which one of you guys took it? I'm assuming Cora did. Yeah, Cora had it. So we were in the middle of she wanted to take it to the sheriff, and I was at the point where I agreed to go, but would stay outside and then leave. So, Cora was still in the process of trying to get me to, you know, join and, and help help her with, you know, looking into this further. So, and Percy was okay. still resisting. Alright. So. We could, um, I could have taken him back to the store and, like, put him up for the night there. Um, well, and then start yeah. fresh the next day. How about this? Um... How about, uh, Cora, roll a persuade check. Okay. And then, I'm trying to see what would work against persuade. Um, pretty much, uh, I figure. Actually, it sounds like you guys are both persuading each other. Like, Percy to go or not to go. So Percy, why don't you also roll a persuade check? And this is what we'll do. Well, yeah, we'll fit all you guys know how the results of depending on how you guys. Roll. Okay, I rolled a fifty-three under seventy. Okay. And I rolled a ninety-six over ten. All right. Well, <laughs> Percy, you're going to the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I. I Pretty much the way I was going to rule this, I don't know if this is how it works in Call of Cthulhu, but I know this is how it works in Delta Green, where if there's um, opposing rolls or something like this, you guys would both roll the stat, and if you guys both succeed, it's whoever has the biggest number. So, uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's how it works in Call of Cthulhu, but until I look that up, uh, that's just how we'll do it. Um... So yeah, um, we're just gonna we're gonna cut right to the sheriff's office. Like it's uh, um, the same night. Well, no, it, we'll say it's the next morning. Like uh, it's the next day. You guys get there in the morning. Like how? Like what time do you guys think you guys would be heading there? Um, I mean, I would imagine that Cora left. Uh, Percy at the general store with like a bed and some food, and then went home because mm -hmm. she has her kid um and then came over to the store as soon as timmy woke up so i don't know 7 seven thirty to get percy and then head over to the sheriff's office all right and this is a very important question to follow up um percy are you a morning person <laughs> um Hmm, probably not super, more so just because the, I would operate more at night, so I'm probably used to staying up late when it's dark and sleeping through the day, so probably not particularly much of a morning person. Okay, so you're a little tired, because it's uh, at least four hours before you normally get up. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, you... You guys get up, uh, and you guys get there, we'll say, by the time Percy actually is moving, uh, and, and getting there, uh, it's around 8 o'clock. Um, and, uh, it's 8 o'clock, the sheriff's office is open, um, you got, um, kind of a receptionist there, and she's like, uh, hello, um, can I help you guys with anything? Uh, yeah, uh, we need to, we need to talk to the sheriff about something... Um, kind of important. She was in my shop yesterday, and I have some information for her. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, it seems like she's a popular person. Um, what do you mean? You want... Oh, um, she was telling me that uh, another person stopped by last night um, oh. to talk with her. But uh, give me, give me a minute. Uh, let me go go back and see if she's free. Um, and just sit over there. And she she kind of walks back and um, it's like uh, within a few minutes. Uh, uh, Sheriff Hudson comes out, and she's just like, and she she looks tired, like really tired. <laughs> and she's just like, ah, oh, hello, Cora, Percy. Hi, Sheriff. I don't think she would say Percy, Percival. Yeah, Percy is very uncomfortable with where he's at, so he's looking anywhere but the sheriff. Very clearly, does not want to be there, and is non-responsive. Cora just like gently places a hand on Percy's arm to like non-verbally like I've got you it's okay well I guess come with me to my office then and she she kind of walks back leads you guys back to her office and closes the door and and uh sits down and she's like well Percival this is uh what, I think the second time you've been in my office, not in handcuffs? Sheriff, that's yes. not what we're here for. Um, obviously, this is mm -hmm. the hardest thing for Percy to even show up here. Um, and I hope you can take that as a weightiness to what we're here to talk about. Um... He's here to help. Oh. Okay, well. Help away. So Cora pulls, I'm imagining that she has kind of like a crossbody satchel type bag. So she pulls out the parcel um, and puts it on the desk in front of the sheriff. Um, and starts relaying what she knows of this book. Um, Percy found this at the carnival and brought it to me last night. It acts weird. To me, it feels like a book. To him, it weighs a hundred pounds. And it talks to us. And with that, she like kind of arches her eyebrow, just like it talks. I know it sounds crazy, um, but I heard it, um, and it's talking about wanting to be released. Hmm. Okay. It knows our names, too. Hmm. This... The box that you found this in. First of all, uh, was there anything specific or unique about this box? Uh, Percy kind of finally looks at the sheriff and scowls and says, It's Percy. Well, don't, don't call me personal. I hate that. Well, let's do this. Mr. Flanagan, when you give me a reason to respect you, then I will treat you as a friend. If you help me with this, because something just doesn't seem right, about this carnival, circus, Uncle Buster, whatever he wants to call himself. Let's just say, if you help me with this, I'll be able to turn my eye to some more recent thing, uh, events that seem to be tied to you. So, let's be cordial. So let me know. 
Was there anything that you saw or noticed that was different about the chest that, or the casing that was in this? Percy lets out kind of a long, exasperated sigh and says, there was a weird mark on the inside of the lid. Mm Mm-hmm. What, what did it look like? Table talk. I don't remember what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was an eye with a snake around it. Eye with a snake? Okay. Sounds let me, right. Let me just double check my notes, because I'm pretty sure I wrote that down somewhere. Yeah, there it is. An sense. eye with a snake wrap, wrapped around it. So, yeah, you tell her that, and she's just, um... This sounds... strange. Almost... Hmm, it sounds... old. Um... Out Out of everything that's happened, that is probably the least strange. Yes, but symbols could tell us where things belong. And so, um, and so at this point, like, yeah, she, she kind of share, she, well, no, she doesn't share this, but like, uh, she's kind of pointing towards the fact that, or, sorry, let me, let me tell you what she's saying. She's like, this almost sounds occultish or something old and hmm I don't know I don't know if our library would have anything on that but um does your library have anything on talking boxes not that I know of but if this was something of cult like nature or something that if we knew what that symbol was tied to there might be legends or or something or stuff like this the, that we know the other mm. problem we should probably be concerned about is that this chest belonged to this Uncle Buster who is the ringmaster or owner of whatever the circus is so this is something that belonged to him and like you see like her her eyes like in a squint and like she just there's a scowl like and and she like looks at at both of you and she's like and then back back over to you Percival and she's like or Percy and she's like Mr. Flanagan as much as you think that I detest you I do think there's some redeeming factors I want you to know right now this Circus Master Uncle Buster. He is trash. So, if you are working against him, I think we have a common ground. Um, Percival just kind of shrugs his shoulders and crosses his arms non committedly. You know him, Sheriff? Uncle Buster? Yeah. I don't know him personally, but uh, just yesterday in the store was the first time that I met him. And I know I shouldn't go off of vibes or a gut feeling, but something didn't feel right. And so I'm, I don't know, it seemed like, uh, Cora, you also caught to that uh, there seems to be a, a strange correlation with his tour dates as we would say with missing people so I'm contacting people uh, I'm contacting the other stations and seeing if uh, if there seem to be a circus that seems to core like to, to align with the with those dates as well um I don't know if you guys either. You have time. Uh, I don't know. Maybe 
I know our library isn't great, but maybe uh, we can find something. Uh, you guys can uh, head down there if you have the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm going to work from a law angle. If you, and uh, I'll let you guys figure stuff out as the best you, you can. That's, uh, and I don't know, should we meet up tomorrow or, or something to see if, or maybe, what's the day, Thursday? Um, yeah, let's see. As the keeper looks up when a telephone was created. <laughs> um, but yes, I, uh, I should have some answers, uh, hopefully by the end of the day, uh, and so maybe we can talk tomorrow. Uh, yes, th the telephone was made many years ago, almost like, <laughs> almost uh, 70 years ago. Of course I have a telephone. <laughs> um, so, I'll, I'll give, uh, historical fantasy stupid. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'll, Just call... I'll Call the store. Call the store tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, I'll let you guys know if, uh, or maybe I'll just stop by. Well, I'll figure it out. Um, and we'll go from there. Sheriff, I can't help but wonder if the timing and the anniversary, it just feels so significant. You were there. You saw what we saw. Is there a connection? Cora, I don't know. But if it if I wasn't sheriff now, pretty much if anybody else was in this position, I don't think they would have given you the time of day. So opinions aside, let's be glad that I am the one that's here. Cause this does whether it's by chance or on purpose, something something doesn't seem right. So, Cora, do you have some somebody that you trust that maybe you could watch Timmy or what you do? I I know yeah. you can keep him at the store, but just uh, I yeah, don't know, of course. if if something like 10 years does happen again to be honest uh, well there's four people that I know that would probably be the ones that would jump up and only th three of you are here none of you guys have heard from Charles have you? no first case I know I know he took it the hardest, so I hope uh, wherever he is, he's hopefully doing better. Anyway, um, yeah, let's, uh, we can do that, and I don't know, maybe, I think I remember it saying that Saturday is when they opened the doors, maybe we can get an early screening of, of this place, and um, I don't think... Friday might look suspicious, so maybe we can, I don't know, maybe we can grab Caleb as well, and I'll go in there on, on Saturday morning, or, or something, well, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay. Because well. I believe you guys, just from your history, would probably notice something that most of the town people wouldn't. But anyway... I uh, I have some calls to make, and well, I know one of you guys have a job to get to. Um, yeah, so let me know if you guys learn anything. Thanks, sir. Cora mm -hmm. grabs Timmy, heads out. Percy kind of scowls at the sheriff and follows behind Cora. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, and you guys step out. 
Um, as uh, all three of you head to your next locations, and yeah, we're gonna call it there. I don't have a cool cliffhanger. <laughs> so. it, it can't all be bangers. We're going to the library. Uh, actually, here's a here's a good question. Did you did you leave the book with her? Or Ooh, the pat? You uh, called it a book, so that's why it stuck out in my head. Do you leave the pat? Yeah, I have the, it in my. Do you keep um, it? I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I would leave it with her. Yeah, I just I mean that's uh might be just something worth keeping an eye on where that <laughs> yeah, is. So <laughs> slide it back into my satchel. Okay. And so, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody, <laughs> or what, listening, or whatever you're doing with this. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <true>. yeah. <laughs> See you next week. See you later. Bye.